My name is Dr. Robert Preeb. I am the creator of the vlog entitled Parks Are Like Iceberg, Icebergs, where, where I share 30 plus years of parks land use planning and park service operationalization, uh, along with my, more, my recently uh, completed PhD studies at the University of Alberta, looking at how parkland decision-making occurred in Edmonton in the 1960 to 210 period using institutional theory as a lens. Uh, periodically, I pick, I will select things to talk about that are in the press, in the public eye, uh, um, and this is one of those. So I've, this is the third of three where I'm talking about the old Strathcona public realm strategy. The first one was released on the 20th of March, 2023. The second one on the 21st of March, 2023. This one is kind of a, a summative piece where basically I have looked at um, the, the old Strathcona public realm strategy and said, okay, and, and this one is going to say, I want to elevate the discussion a little bit to um, uh, to, to hopefully inform either the public or the administrators or both as they move forward with the with the strategy. So with that in mind, I think the, the strategy as written has a, had a really has some really promising opportunities. I would suggest to you at the end of the day, where we're at with it right now is a clash between three institutions. There is an economic land development institution that loves to get land for development. Um, this is one that is, uh, uh, is led by land developers. Uh, Urban Development Institute is their advocate in Edmonton. Um, this is a group, these, these are a group of hardworking people um, that represent capital interests. Um, what they're doing is quite acceptable. There's nothing wrong with what they're doing per se. Um, uh, they, but sometimes they may compete with other other interests in the city. Um, there's a second institution um, that uh, is economic related, but it's more around the sustainable city kind of thinking. So sustainable city uh, thinking today talks about things like more transit oriented development as opposed to car oriented development, more dense city development, reduction of er ecological footprints of, of cities. Um, and again, and they are they are made up they are made up of um, both uh, state and non-state actors like like the earlier one I talked about as well. Uh, but the the ecology the um, sustainable city one has also has groups like you know this uh, Sierra Clubs and uh, uh, North North Saskatchewan Conservation Society and um, uh, you know Edmund Federation of Community Leagues. Um, they're all so there's a whole so there are a bunch of individuals and NGOs of of various types. That are involved in sustain, not to mention UDI, involved in sustainable city development and sustainable city development practices. So that's the second one. The third one is something that's fairly unique to, to this particular area. And it actually the land base is 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 what defines this particular institute, helps define this institution. So this, if you know this area, and I described it in the first vlog on March 20th, this is an area where that is full of cultural and historical um, amenities and opportunities. It's a place where it's a very vibrant place, um, particularly the gateway, well, both of them. Uh, it's a vibrant place. It's a place where people come together uh, during the day, in the evening, uh, in the winter, in the summer, um, there, there, it's a it's a huge site for um, uh, 
festivals. So the Edmonton Street Performer Festival, Skirts of Fire, uh, the Fringe the Fringe Theater Festival. There's a whole long list of them that occur in this area that last multiple days and um, and it draws people from across the region. It draws people from different ages, cultures, incomes. Um, so there's there's this cultural institution, and and it's it, it, again it's state and non-state actors, but this is one that has substantial component of of non-state actors that help operate the the institution so all the volunteers that run these various festivals are part of this cultural institution uh, they there's a uh, same for the Barscona theater the the Strathcona farmers market now not to say that these groups that those entities might not have people that operate them that are paid but a lot there's a substantial volunteer component to many of the the opportunities and activities that happened in this area. So you've got these three different institutions operating at the same time. And in this case, what's happening here is that the, the, the land base that is that the cultural institution relies on to produce its activities and opportunities and events is being threatened uh, by these other two. So uh, there is a push from the sustainable city uh, institution to have more dense development. So they're thinking of turning some of the parkland, some of the public space uh, into housing lands, some of it parkland. Uh, and they've done this before. This is not new thing to Edmonton. Um, there, they are, there is, uh, they're looking for more transit oriented development. And there's a suggestion that they could get rid of the parking lots, uh, to, to foster promote this whole notion, uh, that served the cultural institution along Gateway Boulevard. Uh, uh we could get rid of those parking lots and then have, folks will have to rely on, on uh, transit to get there because you won't be able to drive there. Um, so, so you have, and the, 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 besides the fact that these are three different groups that compete, they are also three different groups have some common actors in them. So they're not, they're very porous generally. Um, and there's a third part of this is they're not equal. So generally speaking, the economic ones have the power. That's true here, that's true everywhere kind of thing. So the cultural institution that is led largely by, uh, substantially by and delivered substantially by community organizations and volunteers has less power than the other two. And it is that the land base that serves them that is in play in this, in this uh, strategy. So, for me, I don't see this necessarily. I, I see the the way the strategy is going. It seems to be a focus totally on uh, the the land base here. I think a broader view, and I've discussed it down below. A broader view could see the cultural institution to expand, that will create more more economic activity. That will that will promote and activate uh, low density residential development lands in the area to turn that into more higher density uh, development, and the benefit of that is that's that's the land use that we're that is problematic in sustainable city planning talk these days. It's it's too low scale development. You need more dense development, so it's those lands that should be targeted. So. And you see my notes down below. Basically, I think if you expand the cultural institution and their activities and opportunities, it will activate the restaurants. It will activate residential development in the area. So I will leave you with that. And, uh, you know, I I provide this just just my perspective on life, my perspective on practice, my perspective on public spaces. Uh, and I encourage you to think about it and use it as you see fit. 
And thanks for stopping by. And don't forget to subscribe to my vlog. Thank you.